Good evening, everybody. The Music Fan is back, bringing smiles to the faces, knowledge to the people, and most importantly, music to the masses. And I am back with another part of my 2020 recap. Thank you so much for watching this so far, if you already have. I hope you enjoyed my honorable mentions, my least favorite albums, my 50 through 41, and my 40 through 31. I promise that the rest of these videos are going to be out by the end of this week, which means at the start of March, I can finally go over some new music. Tonight, I am going over albums 30 to 21, but before that, two ground rules. Number one, this list is based on albums, not on singles. Singles can raise the notoriety of an album or give it a little bit more flesh, but if the rest of the album does not meet the standards of the single, then it's probably not going to be on my list. I'm grinning all this on the whole and not the sum of its parts. And number two, and most importantly, this is my list. Now I've listened to over 200 albums, so I would hope to think that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to my taste. However, there is a chance that I didn't get to listen to your favorite album, or maybe it's in my honorable mentions, or in my 50 to 41, or 40 to 31, or it might be even higher on this list. There are still a few more videos to come out, so it might be there. All I ask is if you don't see your favorite album, let me know what it is. And if you don't like some of these albums, criticize it, but do so constructively. Let me know other albums I should have listened to from 20 to 20. And who knows, I might be able to tell you that I already listened to it, or I could potentially tease that's higher on this list. Anyways, enough dilly-dallying, let's get going. So during the last video, I had said that numbers 36 to 30 were all in the metal and progressive metal field. However, there's been a little bit of a change. I listened to some albums again because I looked through my list and I was like, you know what, some of these feel a little bit off in their seating. So you could say that some of the positions on this list changed at the 11th hour giving you a little hint on an album that you will see in this video, but not just yet. So the new number 30 spot belongs to The Gorillas and Song Machine Season 1 Strange Times. I absolutely adore The Gorillas. Whether it's one of my favorite albums of all time, Demon Days, an album that got me through my middle school and high school days, to Plastic Beach, which I didn't listen to as much originally, but I've grown to really like it over the years, to Humans, which some people don't like as much, but if you recall my uh, top 10 list when that album came out, it was in my top 10, as well as Josh's top 10 when we both collabed on our top 10 for that year. Humans was phenomenal. What I always love about Gorillaz is their zaniness, their ability to collab with basically anybody and make it sound good, and their storytelling. I think on Demon Days and on Humans, there's a flow there that is just so interesting. It, it gets you into a world that you never really thought you would enjoy, but you know by the end you are loving every minute of it and wanting to go back in. The Now Now was an album that I liked but I didn't enjoy as much because one without the collabs I don't think the gorillas do as well and it felt very much just like one-off songs rather than the story. So while there was some decent stuff on there it didn't scratch that itch that I had after listening to Humans. So, of course, I've been following this particular project for a little bit. It is, again, a little bit more of the one-off songs, this time also with songs being released every so often, and then combining at the end to form season one. I can definitely tell off the one-offness, and it doesn't get me as Jones as, say, Humans or Plastic Beach or Demon Days, but what is back and in great form is the collabs. And the collabs this time around are all over the place. You have Robert Smith from The Cure, you have Beck, you have Schoolboy Q, you have St. Vincent, you have Elton John and Black, you have Kano, you also have Slow Tie, Earth Gang, JPEG Mafia, Tony Allen, 
Like, the list goes on and it's so diverse, making for honestly one of the more diverse albums that they have ever had, for the better and for worse. Love the vibe of Strange Times, the opening song with Robert Smith. I love the the just really dissonant electronic sounds at the beginning. While you hear Robert Smith singing, spinning around till the sun comes up. It's just so weird and demented and it's a great way of starting out the album. Beck on Valley of the Pagans, something that you would expect, more rock bass and a little bit more energetic. Not my favorite song on the album, but I do enjoy it. Lost Chord is a little bit more atmospheric. Pac-Man is honestly my favorite song on the album. I just love the beat, this like retro 80s sound that sounds like it should be from an arcade game like Pac-Man. And Schoolboy Q's flow on there is just phenomenal. The Pink Phantom is an interesting mix of Elton John and Black. And it's this ballad that shouldn't necessarily work, but it manages to hit the mark for me. Some of the other favorites on here are Aries, which I really like because it's understated. Uh, it is more Damon Auburn being the one that leads the song, and it feels very much like an alt 80s song. I love the percussion and the dynamic work on there. It makes for a very understated hit, but one that I really enjoy. Also really, really love Desolée with Fatumata Diawara, which I believe that's how you say it. It's a song that's mostly in French and you know that's always a plus for me but also it has some solid horn lines that I really enjoy and builds up the dynamics later on in the song. Momentary Bliss as a closer for the main album is super awesome with Slow Tie. I've really grown to really enjoy what Slow Tie does and, and I'm really psyched to check out Tyron whenever I finish up these 2020 lists. Overall, for the most part, there are a lot of really solid songs, but there are some stuff that I'm just not really interested in. Chalk Tablet Towers doesn't do much for me. Friday the 13th with Octavian, I don't like it all. And then the other trouble that I have, and this will also come up with an album later on this list, there's again the deluxe edition stuff that the band usually likes to do. With Humans, it worked because it felt like it bridged the story along where it was an epilogue. And this time around, what frustrates me is there are a bunch of songs on the deluxe part that are better than the stuff on the main track list. I really love the Bounce of Opium from Earth Gang. I just really enjoy that song a lot. I also really enjoy Severed Head. I love the the flow of the rap on there. With Love to an X is so much fun. I love the song talking about someone trying to hit someone up in their DMs and asking them to take them out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I, you know, I can't say it, but it's like, ex-boyfriend hitting up my DM. I love the bounce of that song. Also, Moonchild just has a really interesting flow and makes the song Super interesting. And then J. Pep Mafia's song MLS is really fun. How Far is a great ender to the deluxe part of this, which makes me super sad because if I saw some of these songs in the main track list, I would have definitely put this up higher. But because of that, you know, it's a really solid album from the Gorillas, but uh, it just is not as good as Humans or Plastic Beach or Demon Days, but still, really saw return and I can't wait to see what season two is like. All right, number 29, we have The Strokes with The New Abnormal. I talked a little bit about this one, I think, I think in March of last year. This whole entire year has been a blur, but this was a really solid return from The Strokes, which is something that I wasn't expecting. You know, I heard uh, Anthony Fantano rave about this album, but you know, I've really liked their stuff from the beginning. I've liked certain stuff in the middle, but I haven't been like super hyped to them. I really haven't checked out Julian Casablancas's solo work either. So, you know, I've been a little bit away from The Strokes for a minute, but I'm glad that I came back on with this one. From what I can tell, this album takes a lot of the maturity in Julian Casablancas's voice that he's done over the years, where he's used a lot more of his falsetto, and it shows off his range and his vocal nature, the best I've honestly ever heard it since the beginning. The Adults Are Talking is a beautiful opener and very understated as 
a lot of the strokes have been, but just in a more mature way, in my opinion. I really enjoy the ending part of that song where he goes into his I don't need anyone. That that part is beautiful. Yeah, his higher part gets a little bit thin at times, which can get a little bit mousy, but for the most part, it's a beautiful opener. I really enjoy Brooklyn Bridge to Chorus, which is talking about more of your middle age years. I want new friends, but they don't want me. It's such a fun and funny line. Bad decisions. You know, I have grown to like more. I know it has this vibe of Dancing With Myself by Billy Idol, but also has the vibe of I'll Stop the World and Melt With You. So it's this weird amalgamation of songs that you've heard before. But I really enjoyed the bridge part, and I can't lie, you know, singing, making bad decisions, oh, making bad decisions, oh. It's fun, so I, I can't bash that song. There are also some other beautiful and understated songs. At the Door, a, a more electronic song that builds super well and has one of my favorite melodies that the Strokes have ever done. I wholeheartedly enjoy that chorus, one of my favorite choruses of 2020. Also, Not the Same Anymore is super beautiful as well. And then, of course, the ending, Ode to the Mets, which shows to me Julia Casablanca is at his best as a singer. I have been so wowed by a lot of what Julia Casablanca brings to the, the vocals on this album, and it brings such a breath of fresh air for such a diverse album from them. However, there are some things that I'm not a huge fan of. Why are Sundays so depressing? Honestly, not really interesting to me. Selfless, I like the song for the most part, but there are some parts in the vocals in terms of the falsetto that just doesn't work for me. Eternal Summer, though, is the biggest culprit. It sounds like Bad Decisions by Two Dark Cinema Club, which I absolutely enjoy, and just taken in such a way that's so slow and boring and plotting. There are some interesting vocal parts in it, but for the most part, it's ruined by just how slow it is, how slow the falsetto is, and then the annoying bridge vocals from Julian Consoplancus. And because of that, especially on a nine track CD and with some other not as great songs, it gets pushed down a little bit from where I thought it was going to be. It was at one point in my top 15. Uh, I could have seen it in my top 10, but just with as many good albums that there were this year, it, having a flaw like that is a killer. The other thing that is not necessarily a flaw, but something that I've realized is that there's a lot of very simple melodies that like harken back to Frank Sinatra or more jazz standards, which you know, I enjoy, though I can see why people think that the melodies are simplistic. Still, great album from The Strokes, and I would love to see more of this in the future from them. At number 28, we have Eminem with Music To Be Murdered By. Only Side A. Screw Side B. I've already talked about why I didn't like Side B, and it's because it almost ruined how much I enjoyed Side A. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think Eminem has been doing good work recently. I don't think Revival was that great and Kamikaze wasn't either. You know, I did have Revival in my top 50 a few years ago when it came out, but honestly looking back at it, probably shouldn't have. However, I think this is a good return to form, not necessarily to the point of his earlier work, but more of like, Relapse, Recovery, Curtain Call, even the Slim Shady LP 2. Like, I see a lot of what I like from those albums in this one. It's just a really solid return to form where he's not being over the top cheesy all the time. Are there some cheesy songs? Yes. I think Those Kind of Nights is super cheesy, but also in a fun way. I like the banter on that song, even though the Ed Sheeran part is not interesting at all. Lil Engine is a little bit cheesy too, but I just love the flow there. It's it's fun, it's super interesting in my opinion, and it's, it, it brings back that M.M. humor that I've been missing over the years. Especially on that second verse, I think that is super interesting and super catchy, and I also think a lot of the analogies that he uses on there are super fun. I think he's having fun on this album. I think he knows that his analogies sometimes get a little bit over the top, but for the most part, it works. Take, for example, Godzilla. It's kind of like an updated version of Rap God, but I 
love Godzilla a lot more. I think that the the chorus on there from Juice World is so much better. And honestly, I just love the beat so much more. There's a lyric on there that I super enjoy, which is you just pulled a pistol on a guy with a missile launcher. I, I, to me, it's just super fun in the way that he flows. That it just works so perfectly. Godzilla, of course, a highlight on the album. And you've probably also heard of the other had it on the album which is darkness which is to me one of the more interesting songs that eminem has ever written because kind of like with stan this one works with the the twist at the end at the beginning you're thinking he's talking about getting ready for a rap show and you turn to find out that it's actually from the perspective of the las vegas shooter and you just see the parallels of how rap can be talked about the same way as a shooter is. Also, of course, using the sound of silence in there as the, the motif is perfect. There's also some pretty solid songs that don't necessarily stand out head and shoulders above everything else that Eminem's done because he's been doing this for decades now. But I like Stepdad. I like Leaving Heaven. I think In Too Deep is a beautiful ballad from him also all the ones with guest features and and a bunch of rap artists like you gonna learn with roast of five nine and white gold as well as yaya with roast of five nine black thought q-tip and the noun as well as i will with king crooked roast of five nine and joel ortiz roast of five nine a lot on this album but still all of them are super fun i love all the different verses from everybody and to me it brings out something that I've been missing from other albums of his the collab work is it heads and shoulders above all of his other works no and there are some parts that aren't interesting to me Marsh is a super annoying song and yet a lot of the stuff that he talks about he's talked about over a lot of different albums but I think this is a good return to form from him and there's a lot of songs on this hour-long CD that I love coming back to. So you know what? Great job from Eminem. Don't check out Side B, for the love of God. Just listen to Side A. Let's forget that, that ever happened and hope that he does something even better next time around. Number 27, we have Gregory Porter with All Rise. This is someone that I got into when I was in college from the recommendation of a lot of my jazz friends. I really liked Liquid Spirit, even though I don't think it ranked in my top 50 of that year. I love Gregory Porter's voice. It is low at times, but it has so much power. You will absolutely love his voice if you love baritone jazz singers. And even though I've missed some other albums of his that I've been meaning to listen to, I'm glad that I checked out this one. This one is a little bit more on the gospel side, which, you know, isn't necessarily a draw for me, but there's just so much power and so many beautiful and interesting songs on this album. Dagon Thing is so much fun. Revival Song has so much power. Long List of Troubles has so much oomph to it. I love his vocals on there. Mr. Holland, love the vocals on there. Phoenix, Everything You Touch Turns to Gold. A lot of power, a lot of smoothness there. And then there's also a lot of old school jazz ballad feels on there that just works so well with a smooth voice. Love is Overrated, Faith and Love, even Modern Day Apprentices, which is super old school, and then Merry Go Round, which is super whimsical. There's a lot of beautiful ballads. There's a lot of really solid, high-hitting energy gospel songs. There's a lot of blues songs. All together, it makes for a very enjoyable album. Is it something that is super original? No, but overall, I just love what Gregory Porter is doing here and he's got me hooked and I hope he hooks you as well because this is one of the better jazz, R&B, bluesy gospel albums that I've heard in a very long time. I just hope next time around he does something a little bit more on the jazz side, but if he keeps going gospel, I can't be mad at that. His voice works perfectly with that. Number 26, we have Sufjan Stevens and The Ascension. Just like with Eminem's Music to be Martyr side B. This album was almost ruined for me because of Aporia, but I had it the other way around. I at least got a chance to listen to Music to be Murdered by side A before hearing the second part. Aporia came out before The Ascension, and I'm so glad that I gave The Ascension a couple more chances 
because man, the first time I heard it, I was not impressed and it was because of the electronic sounds of Aporia. But make no mistake, this is a great outing from Sifter and Stevens. After the more acoustic nature of Carrie and Lowell, as well as the more grandiose approach with Planetarium, this is a little bit in the middle. It doesn't have the grandiose effect of Planetarium, just because of how widespread that idea is, but there is a lot of power and a lot of depth in a lot of these songs. Even still, there is a lot of beauty. Take for example, Video Game. One song that I just love the melody on, it has a more simplistic vibe than a lot of the other songs on the album, but I just love the, I don't wanna play, I don't wanna play, I don't wanna play your video game. It's super simple, it's short, but it's so much fun and just a pleaser on this album. Run Away With Me is more ballad wise and slow, but I think has another beautiful melody to complement what is going around there. I think a lot of the melodies work so well with the build of the electronics on here. Ursa Major, I love that song. I love it so much. It just is super interesting because it's sparse at times and the way that the music builds and the vocal parts build, especially during the chorus of, I wanna love you, I wanna love you. That note itself is, is a bluesy note comparatively to everything else that's going around it. The verse part is a little bit more monotone and piano. And then when that comes in, it just hits so well. I also love Landslide that has so much power to it. Death Star and moving into Goodbye to All of That, which I'm almost certain, and I would love someone to at least let me know if that's the case. Part of Death Star sounds like part of Age of As the do 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 like it sounds super super familiar. But the cool thing about it is while Death Star is going on, that goes in and then it transitions to Goodbye to All That, which adds that part later on. I love the build of electronics there. There's also so just so many layered parts of electronics throughout all this album. I thought the Age of As was good. I think this does a lot of this much better. Yeah, there are some songs that are overstayed or welcome a little bit. Sugar, though I like the idea, I think it's a little bit too long. And Make Me an Offer I Cannot Refuse, also not necessarily my favorite, but I like parts of it. And even America, the, the song that was like the song in terms of this album. I like it, I like the build, but for 12 and a half minutes, it, it kind of gets stuck at points with just how slow it moves. But as a closer, super cool. And then also the Ascension, super beautiful. I can't leave this album without saying that. If anything, it kind of feels like the last song in my opinion. Talking about feeling pure of heart and mind and spirit after fighting so long and dealing with grudges for all your life, just like, finally getting to the point where you can be free of that and ascend to a much peaceful and calmer state. Excellent CD. Please check it out. I love Sifton Stevens and he just keeps hitting it out of the park. Now if you could only do less collab stuff, that would be great. All right, we are halfway through. Number 25, we have Ichiko Aoba with Wind Swept Adan. This is one that I heard from Anthony Fantano. Yeah, I'm not someone who usually seeks this music out, but this drew my attention because of how beautiful a lot of this album is. This is, from what I can tell, a Japanese artist. And with other albums that I've talked about, like Lido Pimenta or Vulcan or Tricot, you know that this album is doing something right if I don't understand the lyrics and yet I have it so high. At one point I had this in my top 20, but there are bits and pieces that just don't do it for me as much anymore. But even still, if you love just beautiful, tranquil music, this is going to do it for you. This album, when I first heard it, just felt blissful, felt peaceful. And it was perfect because, you know, I was not in a great mindset when I first heard it, but then like, I just really got into it. There's so much good use of space, of tension, of harmonies that just work so well. There's one particular song that starts on the major seventh in the vocal, 
when you don't even think it's going to happen and it just is so beautiful each time the melody lines are whimsical and lovely like I can't gush enough about this and I know it's only 25 but trust me this is an album that's well worth it if you're just looking for serene beautiful jazzy music it does feel windswept it feels like you're on the clouds or in the ocean if you look at the cover art which I have up here it's someone swimming in beautiful water and that is perfect for what this album feels like you're being enveloped by the beauty I can't gush anymore about it check it out if anything of what I said just turns you to this album number 24 we have Sam Smith with Love Goes. Why is no one talking about this album? Why is no one talking about Sam Smith? It's not like he fell off the face of the earth. It's actually kind of frustrating to me because not many people were talking about his album from three years ago, The Thrill of It All, even though I found it to be super beautiful and super mature for his sound. There's not a lot of things that he's done musically that have been a wrong step in my opinion. He has an amazing voice and a lot of the music that he has around him works super well with his voice. To me, in terms of pop music, the two best male vocalists going right now are Sam Smith and Adam Lambert. And there's a reason for that. They have amazing voices. This album keeps showing just how good he can be. Now, to be fair, a lot of these songs are a little bit more pop-centric, a little bit more paint-by-numbers at times, but man, there's just so many beautiful vocals on here and so many catchy songs. I love the hell out of diamonds. Such a good song. You want the gathering gold, my heart's already been sold. Like, so good. Young as a acapella opener, really solid too. Another one. Oh, congratulations, you found the one, another one. So serious. I get so serious sometimes. My heart is staying on a wire. For the lover that I lost, rivals lay me down. Just so beautiful, so heart-wrenching at times. I also really love Kids Again. It feels familiar and of course it does because Ryan Tedder from One Republic is the one that co-wrote that song but it still works so well in his voice. Do you even think about it the way that we change the world and how we don't look back because we'll never be kids again. Man there are so many songs that I have listened to and re-listened to and re-listened to and have sung and want to sing and want to cover. The only things that don't work in its favor are there are some blandish songs. Breaking Hearts isn't that great to me. My Oasis has gotten better, but it's not my favorite song on the album. Love Goes is a little bit weird with its chorus melody. And Forgive Myself is good, but in terms of the ballad work, not as interesting. Another thing that is very frustrating to me about this album, and I will say personally why it slips, all of the bonus tracks on there are the songs that you've already heard and are, to me, amazing songs that would have made this album so much better if it was on the main track list. And it feels so weird that all the big singles are the ones that are the bonus tracks. Promises, so great of a song. I know it's with Calvin Harris, but still, you could have put that on the main track list. Fire on Fire is beautiful. How Do You Sleep has such a great chorus line. That would be such a fun acapella song. Dancing with a Stranger with Nomani is also really good. And To Die For. Honestly, it's a song that sums up a lot of what I've been feeling over over the years, and I bet a lot of people have been feeling, especially during this pandemic. The music video is super weird. It is a beautiful song too. He creates so many good pop ballads, and I don't know why this album is not getting any praise. It is one of the best pop albums of the year, in my opinion. Yes, there are more diverse ones that I didn't even rank in the top 50, and I get that, but for the love of God, like, why is no one talking about this album? Why is this not up for any sort of awards? Like, this album is great. If you haven't checked it out yet and you're a Sam Smith fan, you are missing out. Go now. Listen to it. All right, number 23, we have Elder with Omens. 
This is also one that's hard for me to rank. At first, I had this in my top 10. I thought this was gonna be a shoe-in for the top 10. This is where vocals matter so much. This is one of the better sounding progressive albums I have heard all year in terms of guitar work, in terms of the overall arrangements. A lot of this stuff is a little bit sludgy, a little bit slower, sometimes doom-ish. It takes the idea of like some doom ideas where like it's slower and repeating ideas, but it's beautiful with the progressive work. Some of the guitar lines, some of the arrangements are some of the best that I've heard all year. The problem is the vocals are horrible for the most part. Either the lead singer is a little bit out of tune or just not hitting the note fully, or because of the production, it feels tinny. It feels like I can barely understand what the person is saying. Now, there are songs that make it work because there aren't as many vocals. I will say like the last two songs where there aren't as many vocals, it works better. But the first couple, it, it just is a drag to listen to. This is tough because vocally, this shouldn't be even in the top 50. Musically, this should be in the top 10. So I had to meet it somewhere in the middle. And just the music is so trancy and so interesting and I will always come back to it. So if you like really good progressive metal with some doom aspects, a little bit transcendental at times, this is gonna be for you, but be warned, the vocals are not the selling point. I would say just tune out the vocals. Personally, I don't even know what a lot of the lyrics are saying because I'm tuning out the vocals every time I'm listening to the music. That is my caveat with this. It's disappointing, but also great at the same time. I just hope that the next album from Elder is a little bit better in terms of the, the cleanness of the vocals. Number 22 is Novena with 11th Hour. There's that tease for you. This was gonna be number 30 at one point in time. But as I listened to it more and more, there was just so much there that I really enjoyed in parts that I couldn't place it that low. Now, for those who don't know who Novena is, they are a super group. One that I found out through Sonic Perspectives and one that I'm super happy that I checked out because it has Ross motherfucking Jennings as a lead vocalist. The Haken lead singer is a part of the super group. So is a couple people from Slice the Cake. And because of that, it makes for this really interesting and odd arrangement of talent because there's technically two lead vocalists. You have Ross Jennings as the clean vocalist, and then you have the lead singer of Slice the Cake as the screaming vocalist slash word poet. And what I mean by that is because there are some songs on this album where there's some beat poetry spunk throughout it, like on Sal Away, or The Tyrant, or Prison Walls, or Lucidity. Some of them hit very well, like on Sail Away. I think those the stuff on The Tyrant works well. And The Prison Walls, for the most part, is good, but a little bit over the top. Over the top is the perfect word for this album because it takes a lot of progressive ideas and tries to stick them all on the wall. That makes it good, and it also makes it bad. I love Sundance as a single. It's a little bit more folky uh, progressive and the harmonies on the chorus are gorgeous. Disconnected is a song that is a little bit more upbeat and a little bit more poppy and uh, for the most part it's really happy with its music and I do really enjoy that. Sail Away, beautiful ballad after the spoken word part, moves into Lucidity which has some beautiful piano work and also has this interesting vocal part from Ross Jennings while the spoken word part is going on that reminds me a lot of Animal Collective out of all places. And then there's also some great ending songs. Corazon, one of the best prog songs I've heard all year. It has this Spanish flair, has Spanish lyrics in it, has a lot of polyrhythmic ideas and a lot of overlapping melody lines. If you want the, some of the best examples of polyrhythmic clapping and overlaying of melody lines, this is a perfect example of it. Indestructible, The Tyrant, and Prison Walls as the last trio really saw a way of ending the album. The problem with this album though is not everything sticks. For example, 
2059 has this vocal line that I've never heard before where part of it goes like the major seventh to the one and then the major seventh to the third and the major seventh to the fifth and then jumping back. So like do 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 and it's very jumpy like and it's a really cool idea but it's one that didn't necessarily need to be there. Same thing with stuff on lucidity. There are some parts on there that just don't flow well, as well as indestructible. As much as I like the vibe of most of that song, it's super poppy and it's super jumpy with its melody line when it doesn't necessarily need to be. There's some weird vocal parts on the verse with Ross Jennings, where he goes, eh, something like that. The Tyrant, for the most part, really awesome song, but goes a little bit too long. And then Prison Walls, as a closer, phenomenal. I, I don't really have much to say other than the fact that maybe it shouldn't have to have been 15 minutes. But overall, it's one of the better progressive albums this year, though it's not the best Rush Jennings album this year. You'll have to wait until when you'll find out where that particular one is. But still, really cool outing from this new band. Check it out if you just like to see very diverse progressive metal. And just know that not everything is going to hit perfectly, but still there's a lot that will satiate your urge for progressive metal. And then finally, we end with number 21. And this is going to be a big one. It's going to be Run the Jewels with Run the Jewels 4. This is my first dive into Run the Jewels and I'm Super excited that I checked it out. This album is about 40 minutes long, but holy clamafuck, there's a lot of really good stuff on here. The beginning of the album isn't as interesting to me. I do like Ooh La La, and I like the idea of Yankee and the Brave, where a lot of the beat is bullets shooting. But I gotta be honest, like, once we get to Walking in the Snow, Just, Never Look Back, Pulling the Pin and a few words for the firing squad, that's where I get sink into this. I love the groove of Just with Pharrell Williams and Zach De La Rocha on there. It's so much fun. And there's a lot of, of course, very poignant songs on here talking about police brutality, talking about the inequality between races. It was a much needed album for this quarantine. It dropped surprisingly and you know a lot of these words ring true for what happened in 2020. I love the absolute flow of A Few Words for the Firing Squad. Great way to end this album. Is this the best rap album this year? No. I think there are four to five more rap albums this year that were better. But make no mistake, I am really happy to check this out. And man, it was just such a blast. And it doesn't stay long. Unlike some of the other rap albums I'm gonna be talking about later on, this one is brisk and it's just so entertaining. Check it out if you haven't already. Everyone's been raving about it. Why haven't you listened to it? Listen to it, come on, listen to it. And that is that for this round. So I got one more video before I get to the top 10. We have one video to figure out what just missed that top 10. I hope you're just as excited as I am because there's some good stuff that missed the top 10. But the only way that you can find out about that is if you continue watching this stuff. So do me a favor, like this video if you enjoyed watching this. Uh, let me know what some of your favorite albums were of 2020 as well as where I made some mistakes or what I should have listened to or even critique what I've won over so far. Share this with your friends if you think that they would be interested in it. And the major thing, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That way I know that you enjoy what I'm doing and want to see more videos like this. And that way you can see the rest of the upcoming videos as well as the videos that you missed in the past, which is going to be a playlist at the end of this video if you haven't seen the rest of these videos, which I course highly recommend. So tomorrow I will be back with numbers 20 to 11. Get excited because you know I am. This is a music fan and I'm signing off.